I'm here in Utah, which I believe is the perfect setting to talk about my song Underwater. I get a lot of questions about what inspires me or like how I get inspired as an artist, as a creative. I always enjoy coming out into the desert or the mountains, go to the ocean if I'm starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed or burnt out. And as creatives, it's important to cleanse our palettes, to clear our channels so that we can continue to create, so that we can continue to bring beauty into this world. And so nature is my number one remedy. So let's dive deep into this session and see behind the song, Underwater. So take me under, ooh, underwater. Underwater was one of those songs that the second I wrote it, I knew that it was special. When I was actively songwriting every day and writing songs for pitch, I was really focused in the EDM space. So what I would do a lot of the time was write songs and pitch them to DJs in hopes that they would pick up the song and add their own productions to it. And so Underwater was no different. I wrote the song with Steve Shebby and Reed, and then later on we added Kashmir as a producer. But when I wrote the song with Steve, I wrote it with the intention to place it with another artist. And after about a year and a half of the song not going anywhere, I kept revisiting it. I kept listening to it. I kept falling in love with it more and more every time I listened to it. And I was like, what if I just put this song out myself as an artist? So this is my first independent release as Kara. It's my baby and it's just a beautiful piece of work. And I love how many people the song has reached. I think it really resonated with everybody because it comes from such an authentic place in my heart. Da, 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 da. That actually is a sample of my voice. Now, Reed is really good at taking my scratch vocals and turning them into samples. That's something that we do in almost every song we make together. And I was mumbling melody ideas. We recorded that, and he took that recording and made it into this iconic sound. So he took my scratch vocal and he put an effect on it to make it sound like a violin like a sinking ship. It sounds like someone's playing a violin as a ship is sinking. And this was one of the first things that inspired the entire concept of underwater. I love that I can come up with full concepts from one sound. That's kind of how my mind works. I don't really come into a session with a bunch of ideas already. I have a bunch of experience that I pull inspo from and I see where the vibe and the energy of the session is taking me. And once Reed started messing around with the sample, I knew that I had to call the song Underwater. <laughs> Can we just talk about how heart-wrenching that first verse is? It's about a twin flame journey, and when you have a twin flame, there's always a runner, there's always a chaser. There's so much tension and turmoil in this situation because you can't live with them and you can't live without them. That's exactly the emotion that I wanted to capture through this song. Oh, <laughs> sorry, the fire is like burning my eyes. You pull me in with shallow eyes, and now I'm falling deeper. You wanted me to sacrifice, and I was overeager. When it comes to the first verse, I usually like to keep it light with just the lead vocal. It's simple, it brings focus to the lead vocal, and it's important to really hear what I'm saying because this is setting up the entirety of the concept of the song. You pull me in with shallow eyes, now I'm falling deeper. Space. You wanted me. A lot of open space in this verse. And I was over eager. Yeah, you told me I was your 
When I want to bring attention to the lyric and make it really intentional, I love to utilize space. I don't want to overdo it or make it super rhythmic or complicated. For a song like this, I felt like the space actually spoke volumes. And I think as a songwriter, you need to utilize all the details and possibilities in a song to capture an emotion. So I love using space. I love using silence even. It's just a little tip that you can use to create a moment in your song. Still no harmonies. What about the others? Yeah. And I know I did all to be over. So take me under. Ooh, underwater. The pre melody features a trick that I always use, and that's an octave jump. And you told me I. Uh, da, 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 da. It really sticks out like a sore thumb when the rest of the melody kind of sits in the same spot. It surprises the listener and it's exciting. It's something different. So let's see how that pre sets up our hook. So take me under, ooh, underwater. Background vocals. Another octave jump. head voice at the end. Oh. Wow, that chorus is such a journey. When I recorded this, it was actually one of the first hooks that I ever wrote with that call and response feel. So I had the choir do the oh to set up my vocal coming in. So let's actually listen to the acapella of this because there's a lot going on here. So take me under, ooh, underwater. And I'll follow you, I'll follow you tonight Tons of stacks Cause I can't fight no longer I got octaves and harmonies going I keep swallowing, I'm swallowing my pride And I'll let A little bit of dissonance I'm in the harmonies I'll take the blame, do anything, whatever you want Just don't let me Super down Super big Don't throw in the towel Powerful, emotional vocal performance And I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on for life Vocal production is so much more than recording your vocals and plugins and mixing. It's how you articulate and capture an emotion, how your voice is captured, essentially. And that is what's going to resonate with the listener. And so that's why I take vocal production so seriously. And actually, I recorded underwater at a time where I wasn't super experienced or confident in my vocal production skills. But vocal production, songwriting, singing, it's all a journey. Like these are all skill sets that develop over time. And the more you do it, the better you get at it and the more tapped in and intuitive you are. And so that's why I don't hold on to projects too tightly even though this vocal production might not be my best work or perfect it's how the song was supposed to be released to the world and there's so much beauty in that oh and i'll follow you i'll follow you tonight because i can fight no longer whenever i have a really high hook I love throwing in the low octaves i'll keep swallowing i'm swallowing my pride and I'll admit I'm wrong around. I remember recording that part of the vocal and I was just letting it rip. <laughs> and I feel like those are the best performances captured by artists is when you just let it go, you surrender to the experience of recording 
And that's when you capture that authenticity. Some of my favorite songs to record are when I can just fucking go ham and not give a fuck if I'm singing in tune or not. Honestly, auto-tune can fix that anyway. It's more about the performance and the rawness and the realness. I love when I capture a vocal fry or a little crack in my voice. Those are magical moments. Absolute magic. Just don't let me drown. Don't throw me in the towel. I think we can all relate to those relationships where they're so toxic and they're just not working. There's so much resistance and you can't live with them because of that resistance and that turmoil, but you also can't imagine living without them. So it's in that desperation where you're like, fuck it, just take me with you and I'll follow you. I'll follow you tonight till I can't fight no longer. I'll keep swallowing, I'm swallowing my pride till I admit I'm wrong or I'll take the blame, do anything, whatever you want. Just don't let me drown. Don't throw in the towel. And I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on for life cause we're underwater. I can almost tear up every time I sing this song. Swallowing, I'm swallowing my pride. This is a great example of how perfection can almost ruin something <laughs> or just being a perfectionist in general can deter you from magic. These stacks here in this hook are completely out of tune. They're all over the place. And there's so many moments in here that don't align with each other. But I purposely left it that way because when I mixed it all together, it felt like a true choir performance. And if you're vocal lining everything and auto-tuning and pitching everything to perfection, that is a style that you can pursue. Do you want that perfection? Do you want it to sound robotic or electronic? Or do you want a real authentic human experience? And I think for me, what defines a human vocal is if there are some imperfections in it. So in the end, me not really understanding how to tune everything to perfection was an advantage for the magic of the song. Swallowing, I'm swallowing my pride. See how flat that is? <laughs> and I will be the first person to admit that I am not a perfect singer. That's okay. I think that's what makes me unique as a singer and as an artist. I think a lot of the biggest artists in the world have such a cool delivery and tone that they don't need to sing everything to perfection. You don't need to have a million note runs to be an impressive performer or singer. So I, I like to lean into that a lot as a singer. You know so well, the words to tell, just like a wave of breaks me up. Some ad -libs. The second verse is typically where I introduce the ad libs and some more harmonies and building out that vocal production, building out the story a little bit more. In the first verse, there's no percussion. It's very much about the vocal and the story. And now we've experienced this big climax in the hook and we continue to build off of that energy throughout the second verse. And so now we have percussion, we have some more background vocals, and also ad-libs to complete the story. You really have to be strategic about where you place harmonies, but in this song in particular, there was space for harmonies, so I went in on them on the second verse here. You know so well, the words to turn, just like a wave that breaks, breaks me up. You know so well the words to tell, just like a wave, it breaks me. And with you here, I'm living hell, but without you, I can't breathe. That's beautiful. <laughs> Shit, I'm getting chills just saying those lyrics out loud. These lyrics are very much a more abstract way of describing the pain you can feel when you love someone so much that you can't live without them, but they're hurting you so badly that it's not healthy 
it's just such a beautiful way of representing these emotions. And the fact that I'm getting chills just reading them back to myself is pretty profound. It means that I did my job as a writer. It's on me, I was your only lover. You're such a liar. What about the others? And I don't want these all to be over. So take me under. I specifically decided not to harmonize the lead vocal here and instead I just added oohs and ahs in the background. I feel like sometimes when you add too many harmonies to the lead vocal, it can distract you from the lyrics. A nice way of getting around that or avoiding that is just by adding a stack of oohs and ahs in the background. One, you get your harmonies, you get your background vocals. You also add more instrumentation to the production, but you're just complimenting the lead. You're not taking away from it. This bridge, I have to say, is one of my favorite parts of the song. I love how we start on the lower octave and then we jump the octave at the end. And all we're doing is repeating the same lyric twice. But jumping the octave with the repetition really drives home the lyrics. Cry for hell, someone please save us from ourselves, yeah. Cry for hell, someone please save It's moments like this where I feel like my experience as a vocalist shine. I'm able to switch up the character and the delivery really quickly. That freedom I feel when I can just belt something out is unmatched. Cry for help, someone please save us from ourselves. I love that line so much. I think it's such a relatable feeling to be so desperate and lost that you'll cry out for anyone or anything to help you, whether that be an addiction, a person, a coping mechanism, and it's all due to your own self-sabotage. This ending is so epic. <laughs> we actually had our friend Farnell record in real horns for this because I didn't feel like fake horns would do it justice. I think bringing in other songwriters, producers, instrumentalists, it really turns your song into a record. Now for the longest time, the song actually ended after the second hook, but when we brought the production to Kashmir to add his production, he extended the ending into this little instrumental section. And that's why I wanted to pull in real horns and instruments because it felt like a real orchestra. And it gave me space to really sing my heart out. <laughs> with my vocal sample pitched down. What a beautiful ending. I think my favorite thing about this song is how it begins and ends the exact same way. It starts with my vocal sample and ends with it. And to me, it's so beautiful how my voice is contributed throughout the entire production. Every second, Every part of this song is made from my voice. You know, it's so funny how the universe works because I started and I wrote this song with the intention to give it away to somebody else. And it ended up being one of my prized works. And I'm so happy that it turned out that way because in the moment, I just didn't understand why the song wasn't getting picked up from another artist. I just believed in it so much. I thought it was so good. It really spoke to me. It really resonated with me. 
And after years of going back to it and realizing that maybe the reason why it's not getting picked up is because it's my song, it's my story. It won't work for anybody else. It won't work for another artist. It was a really special realization because it pushed me into my own artistry and it ended up being one of my most popular songs. All independent, all organic growth. I'm just so grateful that I took the risk and decided to put this out for myself with zero expectations attached. And I truly believe that I created this song for me. And that's why it's resonating. That's why it's doing so well. There's a lesson in that. I'm sharing this because maybe you have a song that you also keep going back to. Maybe you're the artist. Maybe it's your song. Maybe you need to just put it out there. <laughs> Let go of that fear and put it out. You really truly never know where it will go and where it will take you. And I'll find you, I'll find you tonight. Cause I can't